This is a review of the first 13 episodes of Ghost in the Shell's standalone complex. If you have not seen the first 13 episodes of the show, then stop watching this video because there will be spoilers. Oh dear. This show and I have very quickly developed a love-hate relationship. Episode by episode, it's very polarizing for me because I'm either loving every minute of it, or I'm checking my email while the episode continues to run in the background. I think that there are specific types of episodes which cause this issue. We have the Laughing Man episodes, which are mostly good, with one very clear exception. Then there are plot-driven episodes, where the characters are basically cardboard cutouts moving from one place to another with the occasional reaction shot. And then there are the character-driven episodes, which show cases one character doing something which separates them from all the other characters. Obviously, based on my descriptions, it's probably pretty clear to see what types I prefer over others. So this show can be very frustrating for me because of the first 13 episodes, I only enjoyed about half of them. Still, the ones I did enjoy, I enjoyed a lot! The problem is, I think they try to pack in too much in one episode, so it comes off being very dense and overwhelming. The show would probably benefit from a 45-minute format rather than a 22-minute format. That alone would solve a lot of the problems that I have. But for now, let's try to get into more specifics instead of being so broad. Let's begin with the team, which is, frankly, just too big. I would like to see it trimmed down so there would be more room for individual character spotlighting. The main four seem to be the Chief, the Major, Togusa, and Bato. The Chief's main job seems to be to dish out orders and serve as kind of the main base where he relays out all the information that they learn. He's pretty generic though, so let's move on to the Major, who really, 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 really needs to put some clothes on. Because even though she's a cartoon character, it all looks so precarious, and I'm just worried that something's going to fall out. Her deal is that she was a full-on cyborg from a very young age, so that's all she's ever really known. She's had a couple of character moments, in particular the time when she chased down the organ dealers, and usually at the end of each episode she'll muse about the various tragedies that occurred. I like her because she's confident and fearless, and she has a purpose in life beyond just trying to find a mate, and it doesn't bother her. Bato is a lovable Dumbo, but he can be really badass when the going gets tough. He had a character episode, which is actually my favorite episode so far, where he got to chase down a serial killer from a war that he fought. I do enjoy him a lot, and I like it when he gets to do something, because I felt as though I successfully emotionally connected with him from that episode. And then we have Togusa, who, for some reason, I really, really want him to be the Masuda of the group. He's obviously not. He's very capable and very serious, and I don't know why I want him to be like Masuda, but I just do. When he does something competent, I'm like, way to go, buddy! But he always does competent things. He's very good at his job. Maybe I'm just desperately trying to give him a personality, because he so lacks that. There's an interesting angle where he's 100% human, while most everyone else is at least a little bit cyborg. And he got an episode where he got to use that, but I didn't get the emotional connection like I got with Bato. I think the group does need a Masuda in order to liven things up a bit, but Togusa is not the guy to do it. And now for the Laughing Man. The Laughing Man is this show's vicious, or samurai who smells like sunflowers. The thing that represents the main plot of the show, while all the other episodes are just showing that other things are going on too. He definitely pops up a lot, and he had this great three episode arc where he basically rescued the show from the graveyard. <laughs> Though I do think they went a little too nuts with it, and made the show altogether far too complicated. Then there was that episode where we had to watch five people sit in a room and talk about The Laughing Man for literally the entire episode. That was worse than a clip show. That was probably the worst episode of any show that I've seen so far. I almost feel disrespected that the show felt that that was an acceptable way for me to use my time. Do you ever think somewhere along the lines when they were animating it, they were like, maybe we should do something else in this episode. This is kind of boring. Putting all that aside, the Laughing Man's thing is that he might be a terrorist trying to take down corporations that 
are siphoning money from the general population, but in actuality, his motives are kind of unknown. Actually, most everything about the Laughing Man is pretty much unknown, and the question stands if maybe he doesn't even really exist, and it's just a bunch of people building off of each other. However, we as viewers are privileged to some information that the characters in the show don't know about, creating a perfect example of dramatic irony. We know that one dude killed the scapegoat who was going to take all the credit for the Laughing Man incidents. This can help us determine that the killer is either a representative for the Laughing Man or the Laughing Man himself. It's not as if we're any closer to figuring out who the Laughing Man is, though, because we're limited to the investigation that's going on in the public safety sector. But once the big reveal happens, at least we'll be able to say that we figured it out ten seconds before the characters in the show did. As far as the standalone episodes are concerned, some of them were quite good, but some of them were quite bad. I liked the Marcello Giardi one, where he kept coming back to Japan to maintain his clone so he could go on living as the hero of his country. That one was excellent because it really showcased some great action sequences that I felt like the show has been shirking on so far. There was one about a little girl getting a transplant heart, which started out really good, but then it kind of devolved into a pretty simple car chase. Though I did like to hear about the various ups and downs of having prosthetic bodies or prosthetic parts, because for a show that incorporates this into the plot a lot, it goes surprisingly unaddressed. Bato's serial killer episode was, as previously stated, very good on every level. But that might just be because I have a bizarre, morbid curiosity about serial killers, especially when the M.O.s are so violent. You guys are probably not all that surprised to hear that about me. <laughs> the facility for people who have become too dependent on machines seemed like a good idea, but I felt like they didn't push it enough, so it turned out to be kind of a lost opportunity. I guess I wanted Togusa to be in more peril, as opposed to just getting knocked unconscious and then shrugging it off. The one with the kidnapped girl had good action again, but it fell short on the like personal feelings and connecting to the characters, which is why I really think that the show would be good with 45 minute episodes. And then we had that garbage episode with the Tachikoma. And I don't know how people feel about these tanks with personalities, but I hate them. There was a stark disconnect between the first half of the episode and the second half, which made me wonder why I had to watch that first half. I guess when you get right down to it, my problem with this show is that they're not pushing their ideas far enough. Everything kind of seems to be running on 40%. I always feel like they're on the threshold of having something really great, but then it loses steam and collapses. There was also a lot of chatter in the comments, too, about the show trying to be too deep, and I can kind of see where you're all coming from on that front. Sometimes the reason for the lost steam and the collapse of an episode is because it will hit the brakes and kind of veer off into another direction, that is perceived as more dramatic, perhaps? It's like we spend an entire episode fighting clones, and then when we find the real guy, it's kind of like, some people prefer a beautiful lie rather than a harsh truth. But then I'm all like, but why did we just fight all those clones then? The one with the movie is kind of the biggest culprit of trying to pull off this deep twist where it doesn't really belong. I think the show wants to be something that it's not capable of pulling off, especially with this time frame that it has. And frankly, the cast is rather lackluster as well, because they're spread too thin, so we don't really get to know them, and they become interchangeable. Like Claymore, I feel like the show had a lot of potential, but they made a couple of choices along the way, which made it feel a little stiff. With a lot of shows on this channel, I have no trouble marathoning, and then have a difficult time stopping when my schedule demands it. While I could like individual episodes once it got started, it just felt like 10 episodes in a row was just way too much. I think a lot of people will be very disappointed with this review of the show so far. However, I will continue watching the show because when they do land a good episode, then I get really into it and I have a good time. Also, the Laughing Man plotline is very interesting when it's not five people sitting in a room talking about him 
for 20 minutes. And everyone keeps talking about the second season and whether or not I should watch it, but realistically, guys, let's get to the first season first, and then we'll talk. I have high hopes for the second half of the season, because there must be a reason why so many people love it. I have faith in all of your opinions and your taste, because you've guided me towards a lot of really great shows in the past. Next up, I'll be watching episodes 14 and 15, and I want them to be good. I so want them to be good. See you next time. Bye! When he does something competent, I'm like, way to go, buddy! But he always does. He's... <laughs> I think a lot of people will be very disappointed with this review of my show, of the... <laughs> and frankly, the cast is rather luckla. Luckla. <laughs> It's not as if... <laughs> it's not as if... <laughs>